Yeah, that's right. Hey! hey. hey. There we go. Hey. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Hamby with Alt 94.9 and uh, Radio.com's uh, two podcasts, the Capes on Caves podcast, as well as the Casual Gamers podcast. Wait, are we, are we bridging all things now? We're bridging We're all, all things. things. This covers everything. It covers everything. Uh, my co-host on Caves, Bryce, is in Europe. He couldn't be here uh, for this pre-San Diego Comic-Con 50th anniversary preview with Alt 94.9. But my other amazing co-host hey. from Casual Gamers, Jeremy, is here. Uh, and we're also joined by our good friends from here in San Diego who will be at Comic-Con as well. We have Ross and we have Pat, Pat from the OP. Uh, Pat, you are a game designer. Correct. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, and we'll, and we'll, we'll introduce Ross again for the folks. Sure. So we have a, an in-house game design team. Uh, so we do all of the mechanics, rules, uh, basically how you play the games, test them, make sure that everything's balanced and fun and exciting. Uh, before we pass it off to our fabulous art team to make the games look this amazing. Now, Roz, you've been with us before, but introduce yourself once again for the folks. What do you do for the OP? Uh, why is it you're always with us doing videos? Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so we are the op, right? And so it's like Opoly based it there. So uh, I'm a, a marketing manager at uh, USA Opoly, and uh, I kind of hang out on these kind of things and talk about games and come on and we share our passions for the games and all geeky things. Now, folks have seen you on other uh, channels. You've been with Geek and Sundry uh, doing D&D Live. You've taken, what other games have you taken up to those folks uh, before? Like you were just up there recently, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So we, we, we do a lot with uh, Geek and Sundry and a lot of other uh, cool streaming channels. Uh, we were just at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. A couple of weeks ago, and uh, oh, we'll go into that story in five seconds. How was that? And in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> and so, I uh, I'll just talk about uh, it for we five made seconds. It out. <laughs> uh, yeah. I uh, I'm, I might have flown to the wrong Columbus. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> How many Columbuses are there? Apparently, uh, At more least than one. Two. Yeah. How many Springfields are there in America? Yeah. A three-gate airport in Columbus, Georgia is where I flew Columbus, to. Columbus, Georgia? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And the airport closed when I arrived. And so I, but I got back to Columbus, Ohio, uh, literally within enough time to get on and then get on for, for Board Game Geek. And we, did, like, so we, were, we, we do a lot with uh, Board Game Geek and Twist Gaming and Geek and & Sundry. And a lot of, there's a lot of really good channels out there that are all doing lots of really cool stuff to yeah. share uh, gaming. Yeah. Right, and so along with everything we do with board gaming, just tabletop gaming in general right now is having its like renaissance period, and it's just wonderful that we get to kind of come in and, and share with you know with you guys about all the cool games we're doing. Oh, and I, I had a setup for you because my mom, uh, I, I was taking my son to babysit with my mom yesterday morning, and I was telling her about this, and I was I was like, yeah, hey, we're really excited. We got some big Comic Con stuff coming up this week, and and I said, you know, our good friends are coming in uh, from the op, and we're going to be playing some board games. We're checking them out, and she's like. Do people even play board games anymore? And my stepdad, he goes, he has a whole library in their living room <laughs> filled with like 30 board games. Right. Every time you walk in the house, you see them. So, uh, Pat, you had a good anecdote for this too. Do people even play board games anymore? Uh, yeah, absolutely. This was my, so my story was I, I was uh, being interviewed for jury duty right in there asking you all the questions. And what's your occupation? I said, oh, I'm a game designer. I design board games. And the judge was like, oh, that's. That's a dying industry. And I was like, well, <laughs> yeah. let me. Uh, Actually. Let, yeah. I was like, this is where I'm going to get kicked off the jury, which I'm like, okay with. Please tell me you yeah. told that judge to kiss your ass. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, really? In a, very, really? in a very professional manner. I was like, let me tell you about the actual growth of the industry. And then he kind of looked at me like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> settle down. Nerd. Right? Nerd. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, nerd. So let's talk yeah. board games for just one more second, yeah, too. Yeah, but, yeah. like, you have some on the table that are that have been Target exclusives for a while. Some of these are just going to be debuted at Comic-Con for the first time. Some of these have been Kickstarters, maybe. So The not, game industry is like all over the place, right? Yeah, 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 which is super cool. So the Ops has been around uh, in San Diego for 25 years. Yeah, absolutely. And we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year, which is fantastic. I used to play a lot of Seen It. These guys made Seen It. Yeah, that yeah. was my game. Every version of Seen It. Harry Potter, Seen It, everything. I had them. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, and one of our, our, our first game we ever made was uh, Monopoly La Jolla Edition. Oh my, oh my god! Yeah, which is which is super <laughs> cool, right? Like one of those just interesting things. And so yeah, for a while we did uh, cities and sports and Olympics and all kinds of. School. But from like, we have the uh, the Hasbro co brand, so we do a lot of the licensed monopolies and clues and yakis that you see. But along with that, the the hobby industry in general is just blowing up, right? And so we've got a lot of really cool games here that are I, I like saying hobby games, where it's like okay, you're a gamer, you know what this is. Mm -hmm. So for game, right, you're not you're gonna bring more than just. You know, categories or whatever. I know that's, oh, that's kind of a deep dive on that one. But, uh, yeah, so we, we've got a lot of cool games here. So these are all games. We're past apples to apples, right. folks. 100%. 100%. Yeah, we're not 100%, playing right? apples yeah, to yeah, apples yeah, yeah. today. Wait, what 
I don't want to be past apples to apples. Would you like apples to apples? You can do that too, right? And so I think one of the cool things that we've got here is uh, these are all games that we've done in-house. Right, and so um, we have our blank slate, which we brought up, but that was a game that we had to target, and now it's moving into our main line, so you can get it at game stores and stuff like that. It's a fantastic uh, party game where you've got um, a blank and then a word, so like what, or a word and then a blank. So for example, it could be a uh, blank house, right? And so then you've <laughs> got to. Sorry, I was just filling in the blank. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent, right? So then you've got to essentially uh, write a word, and you want to match with one other person, but you don't want to match with more than one. So if you match with one, you get three points. But if you match more than one, you get one point, And then it's first person 25. Oh, okay. So you want to think of the almost most common word you're going to do for that, uh, which can get pretty exciting. Um, so I, I actually like that I can find a lot of your games at yeah. Target. I think that's a big thing for me. Like, if I go to Target, not that that's the only place you can find your games, love seeing these things on the shelves, the color, the variety. Did you see? I, I did. We'll oh, get, we'll oh, get oh, oh, we're getting there. We're getting there, right? And I, I, that's, that's kind of one of the neat things, right? So we've got Blank Slate's been in Target, and Telus Richards has been in Target, Astro Trash will be in Target uh, later this year. But at the same time, like we are big promoters of our San Diego like local game stores too, and game stores across the whole U.S. You were just uh, on your Instagram, uh, Ross. I follow Ross on Instagram. What is your Instagram for the phone? Uh, it's it's at, at almost Kirk. At almost Kirk, because you're almost uh, Captain Kirk. Is that what it is? I mean, <laughs> so uh, you were just promoting a new game store that just opened up here. In yeah, Sydney, right? uh, War 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 Warp Rider Games uh, just opened up down in uh, down off the ninety four. And it was super cool. They had they've been around for about two weeks now, and they just opened up. They, they were a big Warhammer store. They got some board games in there too. So they had their grand opening uh, on on Saturday. I think it's another thing too. I think uh, if people know about a local game shop, they may think, oh, figurines and you know people color a lot, and there's oh they have these big setups. But these games are coming back to the shelf front. These games are coming. They're taking over these game stores again. Whereas maybe like a Warhammer or D and D more of the tabletop miniatures type thing may have taken over for the hobby niche for a couple of years where people thought, well, I can't really get into it. I, I, I don't have the time to paint. I don't have the time to make all these cool armies. But if you go to those game shops now, you'll see that stuff and you'll see this stuff again. Well, right? I think I, 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 Pat and I were talking the other day about that there's like 5,000 games coming out a year now. Yeah, right? yeah, Pat, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah the, I think the estimate right now for uh, Gen Con, the big show coming up, is uh, like 2,000 plus games just at that show. Jesus. Would yeah. that be, would that be, is that's, that like 2,000 games. games just this year? Oh, yeah. no, no, no. So there's 5,000 games estimated coming out every year now. But like when I got started in the, in the industry about like 10 years ago, it was like maybe about you know 500 to 1,000 games. But because as, as you brought up, because the tabletop industry is at a point where you can find games uh, through bigger stores, and through mass, through hobby stores, which are more prevalent now, and then through things like Kickstarter, you're, you're getting you know, all these different companies that are coming out with games that are, you would never even think of. But how cool is it now that we could have games like It or Die Hard or I mean, stuff yeah. like that? And, and it's at a point where you're like, how cool is it that this is a game now that I can play and it's not going to be some just licensed oh, they just put some cardboard together. Like, this is an awesome game. We're, like, we could play it and legit, like, this is going to be what we're going to be doing. And it's fantastic. Well, why don't you start opening that up, one up for us? Let's talk Comic-Con for a brief second because you guys will be at Comic-Con. Comic-Con's next week. If you're watching this on a replay, it's this week. Hey, go have some fun. Uh, there's a lot of free stuff to check out out and around uh, at Comic-Con. Don't look past that. In fact, go to alt949radio.com. We have a bunch of blogs and galleries, things that you can check out. But it's actually the free stuff that makes Comic-Con the most fun. A festival that makes it fun. And uh, Jeremy and I have got our Casual Gamers podcast. We have videos on our website. You can see that Ross has done other games with us. You've been in here. We've done uh, Thanos Rising. Yep. Um, Which we just announced a new uh, Harry Potter, uh, Death Eaters Rising. Excuse you? What? <laughs> <laughs> What? Yeah. Is there any expansions for Thanos Rising anytime soon? Because that's the thing I see online a lot. Is people go, "Where's the expansions?" <laughs> so we've got. Yeah. yeah. So we've we've got a series of promo cards you can get for the game. Uh, that I have add, some that add in some of the characters, and we've we've got a new wave in the works. Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. be on the lookout for those. Um. So uh, you, you guys will be at Comic Con. We're, yeah. we're talking about the different ways that you try to promote. Uh, San Diego Comic Con, 50th anniversary this year. It's one of the biggest things you could do every single year, and you guys do a lot of shows. Oh yeah. So what makes it special uh, to go to Comic Con International, our our show, and what does it take for you guys to bring one of these games to a show? So uh, we go to a lot of shows. A lot, uh, as a you lot. brought up, right? Yeah. You're and about to go to Gen Con. In, to go, in August. Oh yeah, Gen yeah. Con's going to be literally a, a week after Comic Con. We just came from Origins. Um, so we go to about probably 12 to 15 shows a year, 
uh, and even before that, I used to go to like 26 a year. And it's been nice that we can just fo- yeah, I know, bless you. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> but it's uh, Jeremy's but it's, been to E3 and Guardian Con the last 20 yeah, days. Which so. is, I, I, it's one of those things, right? Where it, it's 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 mentally, physically, spiritually draining on your on your. I'm, I'm just now recovering from the two yeah. days I spent in Orlando because it's so exciting. And he gets to yeah. come back and be a dad of two kids, so it's yeah. not like he gets to just relax. Oh, and, and, and then his dad con, you're good to go, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think what's cool about Comic Con, and it's the fact that like we say Comic Con is San Diegans, obviously we know that's the show, but there's you know there's hundreds of comic conventions that happen all over the all the U.S. and the world. Anime Con was last weekend. Anime there's Expo stuff every weekend. Yeah. One hundred and ten thousand people up in L.A. last weekend for just anime stuff, and it's like, oh, is anime? What's what about that? And you're like, uh, Dragon Ball Z is having its like second golden age right now. Yep. <laughs> uh, Sailor Moon's doing its thing. My Hero Academia, which Growing we up. which we just announced a monopoly for that too. Oh, right on. Which is super yeah. cool. I, that's I right. never know. That's I right. never know. I work in marketing. I never know with the Monopoly because you guys have the Hasbro deal, but Hasbro has deals with other game companies. And notoriously, last year I messaged you because Fortnite put out a Monopoly, yeah. and I was like, "Ross, is this you?" And you're like, "No, we didn't get that one." I'm like, "What? But it's Fortnite Monopoly. Man. Yeah, it's the biggest yeah. thing right now." You're like, Fortnite "Yeah, that's that, everything." I, I, I wish that was us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that would have been awesome. But that's a sign that, yeah. like, yes, there is a lot of games out there. Oh, yeah. For a and, lot of different things. But at the same time, though, like, Comic-Con, right? Like, it, it's going to be its 50th anniversary. It's over 150,000 people that are getting tickets. Yeah. Like, estimated, like, another 150,000 people just downtown in San Diego. So that's 300,000 people in Gaslamp celebrating Nerdy Gras. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you say Nerdy Gras? Nerdy yeah. Gras. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, am I wrong? <laughs> no, you're not. You're not wrong at all. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's just one of those things where it's like we're at a point right now where if you have a fandom or a geek thing you want to go be a part of, even if you've just watched some MCU movies mm-hmm. or you can, you know, quote everybody in the Avengers, Defenders, and so on, the Comic-Con's got a place for you. And I think that's really neat because that's just where it's at. Now, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, last year were you guys promoting um, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas Monopoly, and you had a big spin the wheel, big, the spin big the wheel, wheel yeah. and the lights. I don't forget these weird things, yeah. right? So, <laughs> Comic Con to Easy have to a booth man. there to promote yourselves, to stand out amongst the crowd. That's really what. It's so funny that you go to Comic Con to stand out for the crowd, and yet it gets so crowded, and there's so many things that you're like, how do you stand out amongst the standing out? So how have you guys decided? It's expensive to go there. What did you pick? Like, how did you decide these are the games we need to bring? We need to get people's attention, you know? And do you have, like, an elaborate setup for this year? Can you talk about it? I can. Okay. It's super yeah. cool, right? So I, so one of the things with this year, it was funny, it's because we have Comic-Con and then Gen Con, right? And so for Gen Con, that's, like, our big show of the year. And But for Comic-Con, we've got a couple things that are coming out that we're pretty excited for. So our major focus is it even below. Which is our going to be our, our it game right here? We got Pat talk about the game. Right, tie in too because the the sequel to it is going to have an offsite uh, activation. They've got a lot of money that they're spending. You'll see it below, like everywhere. I think that's that's so smart for you guys. Like, which, which is the whole point of yeah. how, how do you stand out? Well, so <laughs> right. one, one of the cool things that we get to do is we work with licensors. And they let us know, hey, here's what our plans are for this show and for that show. Do you want to be involved? Nobody tells us anything. No. <laughs> no. Mushroom. Mushroom. I, we talk about our industry. <laughs> they're so often, and they're like, hey, uh, here's the world premiere of this new um, video. It's your one of your core artists, uh, and it goes live in five minutes. And we're like, you couldn't have told us an hour, tw- maybe twenty four hours ago, oh, maybe. Like, Dude, I would settle for an hour. I would settle for an hour notice. No, that's great that they're like, hey, by the way, in, in three months, this is what we're doing, and you guys can tie. Oh, ahead. totally right, and and so that, so we're going to be doing a whole thing with it, uh, which is going to be pretty exciting. We're going to have some uh, some raincoats you can wear. We're going to have a whole photo activation thing. <laughs> oh my god! We're, we're going to have tattoos that you can temporary oh my, on. Oh my god! Um, so it's going to be all pretty neat. Along with that, we're going to be showing off um, one of our our, our Court of the Dead Mourners Call mm-hmm. game, and and so the Pat designed that game uh, from the ground up, which is super cool, and that's in partnership with with Sideshow. And if you go to Comic Con, you know Sideshow's booth. The, the yeah. big uh, statues and, and figurines yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and they've been promoting Court of the Dead as their own IP, um, which has been super cool. Pat, you want to talk about Court of the Dead for a hot minute? Yeah, so Court of the Dead is currently graphic novels uh, that they have that, that tell the story of the Court of the Dead, which their chief creative officer, Tom Gilliland, created. Um, and in the storyline, you have um, Death, the All Taker, who's been tasked with harvesting souls for heaven and hell. And those souls are basically turned into fuel for their war. 
death kind of develops his own conscious in the underworld and slowly starts siphoning off key souls to keep in the underworld to build his own army to eventually overthrow heaven and hell. Of course, as you so, do. <laughs> so that, that's the story arc you've got going, right? And, and heaven and hell aren't, aren't really good and bad in this story. They're just like, all they care about is their war with each other and winning. And so he sees that as an opportunity while they're distracted to kind of do his own thing and, and sort of right this wrong that's been created in the universe that like human souls which have energy are, are just and, and purpose are just being burned off. And so in, in the game, you get to sort of play the first part of that story. You join one of the factions of the underworld of bone, flesh, or spirit, and then you try to advance your own view of how best to unite the underworld to overthrow heaven and hell. Um, and that sort of kicks off the story arc of Rise, Conquer, Rule, which is the rise of the underworld, um, conquering, and then ruling, uh, which is eventually going to be a three-book uh, novel series, uh, which should be, I think the first one's releasing later this year. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So as a game designer, we were talking off-camera about Jeremy's better at being kind of an engineering guy than I am, and sometimes I'm better at other things than Jeremy is. We both know our lanes. Like, this is who we are. We stick to them. As a game designer, does someone bring a story to you, or do you have an idea for like a, a way of executing a certain idea, and then you think this IP or this story would fit well with a, a design I have in mind? Is it column A, column B? Uh, it's, it's a little of both, because in some cases, we know we have access to a license due to a partnership, and we know that, you know, for example, like, Batman's going to be really hot, and they're doing the 80th anniversary, and it's villain focused this year. So that's an opportunity we see, and then we'll we talk s- about that in five seconds. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so we start looking at like what are the opportunities gameplay wise to tell some of that story. Um, and you'll see Batman Talisman is is part of that. Oh, and um, I should open it up my bad. And then in, in other cases, any excuse for J- Jeremy to have a knife on camera? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Watch your fingers. Um, yeah, in, in other cases, you know, if we're doing something more um, like a party game where you don't have the story to integrate, we'll start from mechanics. Like, what do we want the feeling, the experience to be? What do we want people to take away from playing this game? And we'll design around that and focus on mechanics. Yeah, yeah, right? Well, and so, so, one of the, so one of the fun things with, let's say, Batman Talisman. So Talisman is, is, a, is a game mechanic brand that's been around for a long time with Games Workshop. It, it, it's a roll and move kind of game. It's a big adventure game. Do the whole thing on there, and so with Batman's house been this year. DC is celebrating their 80th anniversary for Batman, and they've also dubbed it the Year of the Villain. So, and they're like, hey, we we, we, we signed with up with Games Workshop to do two Talisman, so we're doing a Talisman Batman edition, and we're doing a Talisman Kingdom Hearts edition. Oh my God! Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So right. And that, Wait, is Kingdom Hearts going to come out this decade, or is that yeah. a, is that a troll? Thing oh or? no 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 no! no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was like making a dig. You are you are Hearts. not wrong. You are not wrong. <laughs> it'll come out with Kingdom Hearts four. Oh okay, <laughs> yeah. right. there you go. No, it, it'll be coming out later this year. Yeah. And so what's kind of cool is uh, so this is going to be the first so four Comic Con. So massive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I got it. Yeah, right. So Look at that. Big. Look at this map. Oh yeah. my gosh. So that's a, so that's the arc. So in Batman Talisman. Uh, what you're doing in that one is you are playing as Batman's rogue gallery. So you can be Mr. Freeze, Poison Ivy, the Joker, and so on. And you're trying to get to the center of the Arkham control room so that you can release all the villains and become king of Arkham. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And so Pat did a lot of work on this game too? Yep. Yeah, so we took uh, basically everything fans love about the classic Talisman experience and then tried to update it, streamline it, and bring it into the modern gaming audience. Um, so it's got a fresh feel, redone rules, uh, some new mechanics and changes to it. Um, There's minis, too, if you want to take a look at those things. Yep. And then uh, what's great is, you know, we had uh, Ross Taylor do custom artwork for the game board that you were just showing off. Um, our in-house 3D team did all the miniatures, uh, which are in here for all the villains, and then there's one for Batman as well. Who ended up doing some of the, the art on the cards? Is it various people, or is it, like, Jim Lee? Or So... A good eye, because all of the art in in the cards, um, basically everything outside of the board, <laughs> yeah. is New Fifty Two. Okay. Um, so this this game is set in that era of the Batman comics in New Fifty Two, um, and then nice. the the graphic design D- that huh? surrounds all the cards okay. is uh, done by one of our in house graphic designers, uh, Pam Warrick. Oh, right on. So, what is a day in the life for you guys as game designers, people that work on you know board games and stuff? You come into work, you, do you have a project set up, or is it one of those things, uh, like, you're in between projects and, and 
do you guys go into a conference room and like, all right, Pat, you're going to work on this? Or like, do you have an idea that you want to bring to the table? Or Well, I, so it's, just so hop on yeah. really quick, right? So it's, it's interesting, right? Because so one of the things that's cool about uh, the op is that we are a very large company that has been doing this for a long time. And so we've got uh, about a whole different team. So like, here's our prelim team to figure out what we're going to do for 2020 or 21, right? We've got our licensing team that goes, hey, here's this new license that we're going to work with. We have our design team who's like, I have some cool mechanics that we can do or some co-brands. We have our graphics team that's like, oh my gosh, this art would be great here. This I don't think you guys there. left out a single of I know. rose gallery. It's, you it's, have like it, all it's of a pretty rose. intense rose gallery, right? And so what we'll work with, with, with an IP and find a license and do that. And so like it's I, I, like for my day, I come in and I'm like, cool, here's the games we're going to market. But with Pat, like he's working on our, our new line right now, right? And so like, when you come into work, Pat, like what's going on? Yeah, we're, we're like knee deep in 2020 game development. So most of the 2019 stuff is already in production or on the boat on its way over. So um, right? I know. Just look <laughs> at them. Like, <laughs> so what, what we kind of do. You know, it's, it's just so good. Yeah. It's, and, well, Darren did such a fantastic job with those two. It was, uh, I mean, he's a, a big Batman fan and Joker's his favorite character. So he put a lot of love into sculpting each of those as, as unique figures for this game. I mean, Ivy's um, even sitting. I can tell it's her because it's poison. Like you know, the, the plant throne. Yeah, yeah she's throne sitting on the throne, and she's. I mean, even her finger comes out. I mean, the the, the little detail in yeah. the plastic is amazing. It's 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 pretty rad. So, and but like like one of the funny things, like I, I'm on the other side of the of the of our big pit. We have kind of our thing, and so I'll be working on marketing stuff. But I hear laughs from across the room because Pat and his whole creative team they're just playing games the whole time. They go, "Oh, we have a new game mechanic. We're gonna play this game out." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm like Ross can play games," and I'm like. I want to play games right now, but I have to do marketing work. Yeah, I've got a real job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. We we just goof around is really what we do. No, we... when we do these videos, that's what everybody else in the building does. Oh, really? oh, you guys should be goofing off for a little while and looking at some games. And we're always like, it's our podcast. Like, what, what do you want? Uh, this is totally work right now. It's totally work right yeah. now. Hey, you know what? I was justifiably playing Destiny an hour ago because I wanted to see all the moments of Triumph stuff. That's that's a good point. Got me, it's, it's all content. This is why Jeremy plays Destiny at work, folks. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, to totally works. It's legit. Anyway, go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Good. All good. Um, so, yeah. So, it's a lot of, um, like, we kind of map out the line. Like, what licenses do we want to hit? What game mechanics do we want to use? What originals do we want to try to fit into this year and make sure we can actually like manage all of the workload with the team. Sometimes we'll reach out to outside game designers that we know and say, hey, we know you love this IP. We've got this idea. Can you execute it? And usually people are pretty pumped to get that call, right? Because it's like, wait, you want me to make a game based on the thing I love? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> sign me up. We, um, had, we had a couple this year where I reached out to some buddies. I'm like, hey, like, you know, we need a game that you're good at this style of game and you like, and you like this IP. And I'll, it'll go from the Facebook chat to a phone call. It'll be like, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what is this? No, you're not asking me to do this. <laughs> yeah. um, I do like, I'm on your mailing list. So yeah. if, if you guys want to check out new games uh, or have a chance to test them out uh, before you have a chance to, uh, share the details on that. But I get the email, and when mm -hmm. I get the email, it'll, it'll give a hint. It doesn't tell you what you're going to be testing, but it'll say something like, I had an email recently that said, do you like games from a galaxy far, far away? And you're like, what do you mean you're working on Star Wars? Like, what, uh, what yeah, kind of yeah. a game we is it? Uh, I, I'm not available at that time. Like, can we call Ross for a private showing? Like, <laughs> what do you mean there's a Star Wars? But you didn't say Star Wars. We didn't say, you said. You I said, said Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, yeah, I inferred when I read your email. But you guys do that. You, you, you're, you'll you solicit for folks that have a chance to come test your games. And you'll just you'll have to give a little tease. You don't and say what it we is. We would love for more people to do that, too. So yeah, it, for sure. So if, if you go on our website, on the op.games, we have a whole focus testing area. You can click on that, sign up for it. And we are really revving up right now, too. We've been doing focus testing almost twice a week. I get, yeah, I get an email at least once yeah. a week asking, you know, if I'm available, you know, come up at this time. They'll your, your feed them. You have them test out a oh, game. Oh, yeah. So we, just, so we just moved to a new building. It's been about a year now. Um, so we, we have a, new, uh, a building up in Carlsbad, and we're, we're right on the coast. We're literally like a minute from the water. Uh, which is just that's it's, hard. it's that just horrible. Real hard. It's rough. <laughs> Are it's, you in, living in Santee and having to drive? Oh, across? it's so nice, man. Coming <laughs> coming out of the uh, of the door to go home and the ocean breeze hits you in the face, you're just like, oh, San Diego is so so nice. It's right. so hard to live here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just the worst. But yeah, so we're, we're, we're doing testing for all of our like new games coming out like that. All right, at the same time, like we've got games. We like focus testing too. Hey, what's the market like? like who, who's buying what? Where do you buy games? Stuff like that. Because the more that we can test games and make sure that we're making the right game. We're all going to win. Like so, for example, one of the games we have coming out this year is our Die Hard game, right? And it's Die Hard, the the Nagatomi High Sport game, oh. which is just 
fantastic, right? Oh, and, and bring so, it. Just yeah, bring yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diehard fans over right. here and, like, so excited to check this out. And here, bring the yeah, Batman over here, let's, right? Let's get Batman off the table. Yeah. And so, but with uh, with Die Hard, one of the cool things with that game is uh, it's, a, it's a three-act game, and it's very cinematic. Right, so you're playing as it's a one person all game. So one person's playing as John McClane. Yippee ki yay, mother trucker. Yes, <laughs> or meeple lover, or whatever you want to do. Right, like uh, Me- melon all... farmer. I think is one of the. We uh... have a friend who may be watching this at some point. Uh, her friend is our friend's name is Casey, and she is a huge Die Hard fan. And she um, she makes her Christmas tree is a Die Hard Christmas tree every year. Uh, it's done in silver, and she calls it her Spruce Bruce. Right? Uh, oh crap! She's gonna kick my ass because I don't remember this. Um, but she has a whole her whole Christmas is Die Hard themed every year. That's great. I so, love it. So the board, but before you open it up, so the board has three acts, right? So it starts with flip it over. No, no, just just keep flip it over. Just, fl- just boom. Okay. Oh. No, no, no. Oh, no, that's act not two? even there. Okay, I'm the Act one. Oh, okay. Act one. So yep. Act one starts there, and you're gonna play as John McClane or the thieves. And so John McClane's going through, and he's got different goals. He needs to do, like, find some shoes or oh, get a machine the, this gun. Is the, this is the roof, or the, uh, the, the construction floor. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Where he's yep. walking around with no shoes. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. 100%. And oh, then, my God. And then the other, <laughs> the other three players are playing as the thieves, and they've got cards they've got to do to try to stop John, all while also uh, those cards have numbers on them because they've got to, they got to crack the locks. Nobody stops John McClane. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then, then, then it, after you do that, it opens up into Act 2. Where you got there. So you go to the floor above it from the 31st to the 32nd floor. Yeah, so you go up to the, the computer floor, if you remember, with the shoot the glass. Uh-huh. So one of the thief objectives here is they can shoot out all the glass windows, uh, leaving hazards for John. If he walks through them, he can take some damage. He's got no shoes. R.I.P. So, Alan Rickman. Oh, well, that's, yeah. the, that's, that, that's the next act. <laughs> they were so mean to me. <laughs> don't, don't ruin it. <laughs> what is so, it? So is it fully open? It, when it's fully open, it's the final act? Oh, yep. my God. So okay. there, the other side, you have the roof and then the, the final office floor in Act 3. So here, John's got to get all the hostages off the roof. If you remember, the thieves try to get them, get them all up there so they can... Spoiler. I mean, really? Come on. <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But what's cool, though... I, but 30 years, I think. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Right. Yeah. John McTiernan classic. You should watch Die Hard, okay? It's a Christmas yeah. movie. But also, <laughs> did you notice the colors in the game? Oh, my God. They're red, green, and black. Yeah. Who plays the black one? Is well, that Hans Gruber? That's Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber? <laughs> he is an excellent thief. R.I.P. Right, R- so. to... Uh... He has the gun in everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's uh, sitting on a beach, oh, so earning John 20%. Oh, the right? red guy, so. right? And then all of the yes. terrorists are green? Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. It's like army men in here. This is amazing. A little bit. So the cool <laughs> thing is, if you open up some of the cards there and just flip through them, they've all got, they're filled with quotes. Uh, they're filled with art uh, that is uh, very like this appropriate. And, uh, yeah, the, the game's all about just being a whole cinematic feel where you want to get the feeling of die hard. <laughs> We're also trying. Oh, yeah, you're just going to. I'm going to effing cook you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here you go. yippee Kaye, motherfucker. That doesn't say that. Yeah, it does. I does not say that. <laughs> it doesn't it, It's bleeped out, right? It's There's weird. another yippee Kaye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, it, it, so it's all full of cards because John's going to do different things. But oh, these there's, like, too. bullets. And oh, there's, yeah. oh, this is great, man. Yeah, we tried to pack as much of that, that movie <laughs> theme into the, every aspect of the game, the objectives, the quotes, the art, so that for real fans of this film, you feel like you're playing your own version of the story. I, I love the scene uh, with the two FBI guys and they're on the helicopter, and the one guy's like, man, it's just like being back in Nam. Yeah. <laughs> I was in high school. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other guy's like, I wasn't in Nam, yeah, man. Buddy. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, yeah. then, th- then they lose the helicopter back right. on the ground. I guess we need some new FBI guys. Like, that, that's all you can muster. <laughs> yeah. like, I guess we need some new FBI guys. Yeah. Those guys just died, but whatever. Whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, How does this game play? So, like, does it play pretty quick? Does it go from Act 1 to Act 2 to Act 3? Is it? Does it flow pretty well? It or? flows really well. So we, so we we are playing it at uh, Origins uh, in, in, uh, in Columbus, Ohio. And, when you uh, made it there. I made it there. Ohio's for lovers. And, <laughs> dude, they had their pride going on while we were there. And it's one of the third biggest prides in the U.S. It was a six-hour parade. It was just awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But so how the game plays is so it's a one versus all. And so John's got cards that he can play on his turn. The thieves have cards they can play on their turn. And on those cards, it's got move, shoots, attacks, and stuff like that. So you use those different actions to kind of place yourself in a way that makes sense. And the thieves are also trying to kill John and make sure they can get their own 
find hostages and use RPGs and shoot glass and do all kinds of things. So it, it's, it's a move and roll kind of base game, but it's very strategic. But the flow is very quick. So uh, I, I, we want to talk more Comic-Con. This is our Comic-Con preview, but I yeah. love talking games with you guys. So I have a question to you about uh, games that once they've come out. So Die Hard, the Nakatobi heist, you're not necessarily setting it up that you'll make more Die Hard games, but you could because you've said this is the Nakatomi heist. So maybe you have the airport adventure. Maybe you have the New York money heist. I don't know. You know, I don't know how you. How, yeah. how many Die Hards were there? There was five. Two of them don't really six, count. Six or six. Is six. Oh, there's a six one on his yeah. Oh yeah. my god. We watched Live Free or Die Hard. Oh, I love. I love that movie. <laughs> Oh, it's my so wife was good. so upset. We were watching it at her mother-in-law's, and they were loving it. She's why? Like, it's why a... did you pick this? I'm like, it's Fourth of July. It's Fourth of July movie. They're, they're all holiday, so they haven't done Valentine's Day yet, right? They haven't done uh... first one's Christmas, second one's Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Which was like same bat time, same bat channel, but he's at the airport, right? Uh, the St. Patrick's Day one coming. I want to. I oh, see some, that'd be some... Ar- Arbor Day. Arbor Day. Arbor Day. <laughs> <laughs> do the kid- third one, I don't think had a theme. It was just summer. Yeah. Because they kicked it off with Hot Time, Summer in the City. Right. Uh, with a loving spoonful and then the explosion. Yeah. And I just remember everybody being sweaty. It was very yes. sweaty. Him yeah. and Samuel L. Jackson, everybody's just, it's hot and it's smuggy in New York yeah. City, so everybody's sweaty. Um, so maybe not like a diehard, but like we mentioned Thanos Rising. Do you guys ever have a game that comes out and there's such a demand for more in that game world? Or do you tend to just, do you tend to walk away? Like that game lived that's got its own thing. We like to work on this IP and move on with this idea. So we are one of the main publishers for Harry Potter games. And we do a lot of Harry Potter games. You have a, a from... couple of names. You have the Fantastic Beast one. Oh, yeah. Have, yeah. Harry Potter Trivia Pursuit is also ours, too. Wait, what, what are our main uh, awesome hobby games we have? is Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. So, And that's a co-op game where you play as Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Neville. And it's a deck building game where you play through each Neville of the movies. Before the glow up or during the glow up? Well, so both. <laughs> Both, right? <laughs> so so in, in the game, you start out as your first years, and there's eight mini, is eight games that add on to it in each game, and you play through each movie. That's it awesome. adds more villains and adds more spells and stuff like that, and their their hero cards grow up with them, right? Oh. So when, when you get to game four, they get their, their fourth years now. When you get to game, I think, seven, I think that's when they glow up, right, and do all that, <laughs> and you're uh, good to go there. So but with that game, like, that was it was a huge hit for us and everyone loved the deck building game and the Harry Potter because you really got to play around with it so we came out with another expansion for it that added a fifth player it's called the uh, the monster box of monsters I've seen that yeah so it adds Luna and it adds four more games modes a game to play through right it adds more beasts adds more stuff like that we also just came out with a Harry Potter Hogwarts battle defense against the dark arts game which is a I know, very, very, right. very long. <laughs> there, right? How many so, chapters does this game have? Yeah, yeah. Well, so th- th- this, but this game is standalone. It uses the very the same engine, but it's a dueling club game. So you're playing as wow. g- generic students from you know Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, Hufflepuff. And uh, as you do that, though, you're building up your deck uh, to get more spells and things like that. But we also added more to that game engine. Well, but but then to increase the world, we added in hexes. And we had in all kinds of cool ways to essentially play on that world and game that people love, but added it's a whole kind of a new spin to it. And so that way that people can still, you know, oh my gosh, it was great. Now I'll come back and play that again and do all these things. So we love adding more to it. It's not just a, hey, here's a game. Now we're done with it. Like we love supporting our games and doing these things. A lot of the times we'll do that with, with promo cards too. With Thanos Rising, yeah. You've, yep. you've given mm-hmm. me at least one expansion set for that. Oh, yeah. And it's one of those things where – your mind races where you're like, oh my God, what if the next move you could introduce this? And like, if whoever the next bat is, you could just swap out Thanos for them. And I, I, I even was wondering, I was like, are you going to come out with an in game version? Because that would be dope. Where, I mean, if you, I don't want to spoil in games too close, but I know they said you can. But it's one of those things like, you can play Thanos again. You can play against you him. You can do and, all these things. And so, yeah, like, one like, of the things, like, to kind of get back, to right. kind of get back onto the, the whole conventions thing, one of the things we love doing at cons is bringing the promo cards out. Right? Because obviously, if, if you go to your game store and do an event, you can get the promo cards there. But a lot of times, people can't do that or they don't know. Yeah. So we bring all of our promo cards to Comic-Con and to Gen Con and stuff like that so people can come and get those those cards. A lot of times, like, oh, my gosh, con exclusive. And we're like, no, 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 no. You can, you can just get them. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. we just print those like water and get them anywhere, <laughs> but you exclusively got it here. Yeah, right? And, so, but, and that's one of those cool things where it's like we love that people can, can do that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's talk more about the, the con experience for you guys. 
Um, what what is as a game designer? What is your con like? Are you going to be at a couple of panels, or are are you just going to go in and network and enjoy yourself, or do you have to work the booth for a couple hours? What is it like for a game designer uh, to have like a game at Comic Con? Yeah, it's it's kind of a mix of all those things. So some of the time is in the booth, uh, answering questions, showing off product, those kinds of things. Um, we have a couple panels that um, the op is involved in. One of them is about becoming a game designer and how to get involved and, and how to kind of forge that path into the industry. Uh, so I'll be on that one, which is Friday afternoon yep. at 1 o'clock, I believe, um, and, and talking with some other fantastic game designers from across the industry about you know how we got to where we are and what we do. Um, shows like Gen Con are a lot more uh, demos in the booth. Uh, people want to come, they want to sit down and play the game and, and kind of figure out if they're purchasing it, if they want to pre-order it, those kinds of things. Um, so we do a lot of that work. Uh, we take pitches from game designers sometimes, so people will bring us concepts they're working on, show that off, uh, we'll evaluate things. That's, Jamie, that's that's a big thing right now. So, yep. so like uh, Gen Cons and Comic Con, probably everybody aren't. has a million dollar idea right now. Right, but the, <laughs> but what's really neat right now is uh, <laughs> we are we are kind of like because there's five thousand games coming out of here. Someone has to design those games, and for a lot of the time, not every company or and designer is, is kind of blessed to be at a company like the Op, where like we you know put out a lot of games every year. We know it's going to go into distribution and it's going to go into sales and do these things. But for a lot of guys, like they have this one game, they've worked on it for like four years, and now through Kickstarter or some other thing, they could do that. But if they don't want to self-publish, pitching it to a game company is the next way to go, right? Well, so, and, and, as you're saying, they've done the work. They they've put their time and and work into. They just need someone to help publish it, and that's a, that's why they bring you guys a pitch because they say, hey, I have this great idea, and it could you know, and, and that, maybe that's where you guys go. This guy doesn't know it, but this would work well. For our Spartam on Far From Home game, that like, is <laughs> that is I mean? that like, is one hundred percent how that works. Absolutely okay. right. Yep. And, and so one of the things like I can, and Pat and I talk about it all, all the time, and we on some of these panels too. Is like if you are a game designer and you want to pitch it to a publisher, look into what kind of art and style they do because you don't want to dump too much money into you know spending out of pocket all this art because if we get it, we're going to go look. That could be a Spider Man, you know, whatever game, and it, we're going to totally change your your hens game. You know, to be something else. Sorry. You may That's not know this, but uh, swinging from the rooftops applies well to hens fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Pat has a Pat has a game with it's a, it's a hens game. It's, it's, oh, so, yeah. It's, so that's a su subtle dig there, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's all. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, so that's one of those neat things. Is so at, at those shows, like, and like, on the other end, like, I, for me, and it, for at, at a Comic Con, for example, like. We're going to be doing panels. We're going to be doing press. We're yeah, going to be. You're part of like at least five panels. I'm 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 moderating three this year. Three, okay. Which is which is going to be a lot of. So we're doing two for the board game industry, and then I'm doing one for uh, all the medieval stuff that I do. I was on the hook for two that didn't get picked up. Oh bummer. And it was one of those things. I was like, I might give me, I may actually do a panel at Comic Con, and I'm like, I'm not doing any panels at Comic Con actually. <laughs> it's, it gets interesting because like I think for the programming that they've been able to put into the show, it's really cool because like everybody always thinks, oh Hall H, Hall H, Hall H. No, yeah. but the Marriott's going to be packed full of stuff this year. There's so much programming upstairs. The Hilton Bayfront, oh, yeah. uh, the stuff across the Petco is going to have stuff. I mean, everywhere. And, yeah. and there's yeah. so many people that want to go to that. Um, like one of my one of my uh, roommates, he loves going and watching all the new DC and Marvel uh, cartoons. Like he watched uh, one of the new Fatal Five movie before uh, it came out. I used out. to do that. I used yeah. that. That was my big thing for Comic Con was what DC animated movies coming out are. Like, was it going to be uh, the panels in a row? Like, you know, can I line up and I'll get the Batman panel going to the Justice League panel, going to the Green Lantern panel? Like, I would go to those rooms and be like, I'll be here for the next four hours. That sounds cool. like a fantastic Comic Con. Right? Like, right? Yeah, like yeah. That sounds really Nowadays, cool. though, it's either I'm either hosting a panel or part of it, or I pretty much don't go to the panel rooms. Because there's so much else going on. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure, like, younger you would have been like, good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, you're yeah. that guy now, you know? Because, like, when I – it's going to be my 16th Comic-Con, I think, or somewhere in that kind of – that boat. God. I'm going to since I was, like, 14, 25. 15, 25, right? yeah. And so uh, – but when I first started going to Comic-Con, I only really had two years where I was just a consumer, just kind of walking around, seeing the things. I got a demo of War Machine from the Privateer Press booth uh, when I was, like – 18 at that point Ish. and then the next year i was working their booth running demos right and then later the next year i got hired by them and then here we are now right so like i kind of like i was working at a game store up in san diego at, at game empire but then at the same time i found this thing oh my gosh you can work in games you know and that was through that comic-con demo 
and I worked at that you know booth for a number of years as a volunteer. And- I never I never found that career path because in, in a weird way this goes back to when I got into radio. Uh, I got into radio in 2000. And it was a weird situation where, like, I started working at a Top 40 station, and everybody was like, hey, you're one of the hottest guys in San Diego now. I'm like, I'm not, what are you talking about? They're like, you have, you have, to, you have to have that attitude. you got to be out there. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And they're like, you got to be single, ready to mingle, but you're, n- you're never taken. You can never talk. Like, it was a whole thing. Like, you can't be into Comic-Con, dude. That's not cool. And I was like, that's what I'm into. That's what makes me who I – there was a lot of, like, these things were not – they weren't mainstream. They weren't cool. And even going to Comic Con back in 2000, their tickets were everywhere. They, oh. I, I didn't have, to have a problem getting a ticket in 2000. 2008 was the last year that you Just, could buy tickets, yeah, and the year, because, but the year after that was Twilight, you know, and that and that changed the show. Yeah, yeah. It, it did. You know, people were waiting two days before Hall H opened up to even do a thing when Comic Con's like that line isn't real. Please don't wait in that line, <laughs> right? And then like even last year, Funko had one of their offsite. Uh, stores like six blocks down and people were in line on the Monday and the cops had to go around and be like, please, please don't be in line for your pop right now. Right. Like, <laughs> my, my wife just walked by way off camera. She works for uh, KSO in the country station, but she, she said to me last night, she's like, I just remember what my first comic con was. And I was like, and what would that be? She goes, it's the one where someone died in the twilight line. I was like, what a, oh. what a thing to, what a thing to remember. Like, that was, oh my uh, God. Uh, right. And it's, it's interesting too. Uh, like uh, the, the, the zombie walk for San Diego. We were just talking about that. Yeah. This is, this is their last year doing it because they've had so many issues with downtown. And right. And it's and not even like called that. zombie walk this year. It's called something else. And it's in Petco. It's localized into Petco where they're not going to be out in the streets. We were literally talking about logistics about what we're going to cover yesterday. We were having a meeting, yeah, yeah. and people were like, wow, the zombie thing. Didn't they used to do that? And I was like, yeah, until a guy ran someone over, and there's been lawsuits. Yeah, like, so they, 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 yeah. Did it for, they did it for uh, 13 years. For the first year at KingdomCon, we did one. And uh, that was a fun thing because Westfield Malls did not like that. Oh, <laughs> and I, I got a call from one of their they higher like ups. Groups of zombies walking yeah, through their malls. I got a call. Like, like nineteen year old me got a call from one of the from one of the higher ups, and he's like, "I have your cell phone number. Don't walk zombies through my mall." And I'm like, "Oh, I have your cell phone number, but I'm also not going to do that. Like, like we'll, get it, we'll get it figured out. Like now that you've called me, right? And so I have to know we've exchanged cell numbers. <laughs> yeah, right. So I had so then I had to talk to, to the zombie walk guys. I'm like, hey. Westwood Malls are going to be like, cool, we'll just walk downtown, which they did, and it was great, you know, because they're a great group to work with, and awesome, it's really yeah. cool, but it's, a, it's fun that Comic-Con has kind of built a lot of these things in, in Gaslamp that are just, oh yeah, that's a thing we do, right? And it goes like 10 blocks deep, and because of Gaslamp's ability to host that so well, it's what creates that unique experience, Yeah. because there's so many big shows, we can look at Anime Expo, we can look at PAX. We could look at Gen Con. LA Comic Con, uh, yeah. E3. E3. It's not the same. It's, it's, it's not the it's same It's too thing. spread out. Yeah. Right? And like, if you're like, oh, Comic Con could move. And I'm like, look, like, it's not going to because literally when you walk out of the center across into Gaslamp, you're in downtown and you could go for the next nine blocks and still randomly walk yeah. into a celebrity. Your spring convention, WonderCon, which is it's Comic Con's WonderCon. It takes place in yeah. Anaheim. Mm-hmm. Completely different vibe. Yeah. It's literally half the amount of people. It's still awesome, and it's the same type of programming. But you, I, I try to explain to people that like our Comic Con, Comic Con International, is like it's a Coachella esque festival. Hundred percent. It takes over the downtown. Mm-hmm. It's not you have to have a badge. Like if you're not picking that up, you don't need a badge. You should go check out free stuff uh, around Comic Con and, and see all the cool things going on. It- if, if you go on the San Diego uh, Comic Con unofficial blog website, and there's a Facebook event, unofficial events, they've got links to everything going on, and you can just you could literally spend the next four or five days. Uh, Crypto Network does a huge Rick and Morty experience. The mm-hmm. uh, with, uh, Adult Swim on the Green. Oh yeah, yeah. and so we're, we're doing some stuff there with, with our Rick and Morty products. Uh, they're gonna be a part of that. Which we we have a couple too. of your Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty Monopoly. Yeah, right? that's us. Rick and Morty Clue. Do you have our operation? No, we don't oh, have we will, We don't have Rick and Morty we will operation. Bring in, yeah. We will bring an operation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we're at a, what a, Do you have Risk? I think we did so, a so, giveaway so with Pat, it. Pat made Risk. Yep. Oh, right on. Yeah, that was Rick super fun. Yeah. 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 Our Alyssa did the whole, she heard about the getting the, the sauce at McDonald's. Oh, yeah. And she thought, oh, it's, what is it, Saturday at 1 o'clock? I'll be there at, at 1230 with my bells on. And, uh, and she was like, yeah, so it sold out at 11.30. There were four fights. Yeah, and, there was uh, four fights yes. at the McDonald's across the street of my house, and it was uh, unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Rick and Morty fans. Well, well it's, it's the thing is, like, how cool is that that we can still have a time where, like, a, a cartoon can come out of nowhere and then be a huge hit? 
Um, for you guys personally, is there anything about this Comic Con that stands out or that you're excited for? Like, I don't know, maybe the Marvel panel you're excited for new announcements or God, even on, the, on what you guys do, you may have an inside scoop you can't tell us. So that look at your smiling like, yeah. <laughs> well, they're about to announce a new game and I'm excited for it. So, well, I, I, funny enough, like that's one of the weird things working in licensed products yep. is, uh, you know, it's like. Having to recreate that excitement when something you knew about eight months ago yeah. is... And you've is, been working on passionately. Yeah. And, but yeah. um, I, I will say, though, um, having just seen Spider-Man um, Far From Home, I cannot wait to see what MCU does because those end, end credit scenes, which I don't want to talk about at all. Nope, no but, spoilers. Uh, but, woo, woo boy. Pat, what are you excited for from yeah. Comic-Con? Um, definitely excited for the panels. Uh, I'll be doing, there's a, a game pitch panel too, Saturday morning, the Indie Game Developers Alliance lets uh, anybody can come in and pitch their game concept to video games and huge. tabletop. Huge, To a panel of people in the industry, both video game and tabletop, for feedback. Reason to have a badge for Comic-Con, yep. by the way, but yes. Yeah, and that, that's a super fun event that I do every year. Um, definitely MCU. I haven't seen Spider-Man yet, so i got to get out and do that. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but but it, you know, as Ross said, it's it's one of those like, it's it's a double edged sword. We work in licensing, and sometimes like the thing comes out, and everybody's like, I can't believe this happened. And we're like, Oh, yeah, that was that was a secret. People didn't know that, did they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this it game, uh, I want to address it real quick because we yeah. never broke it open. Um, is this based on the first movie, or is it based on just it? Yeah, so this is based on the first film. You'll see so the it is based on no. <laughs> yeah, it is based on it, and it is a thing. Um, so Evil Below is based on the first film. You'll see the the characters are all in their kid form. Uh, so those are the actors represented, um, and that's perfect awesome. photo op, right? So that's uh, the, that's it's the first time we've shown off this box, by the way. So we are pretty stoked for it. <laughs> I'm taking a photo. <laughs> awesome. Um, the the second uh, the trailer for the second movie oh. I am so oh, like so, so creepy so right old woman, I was like I'm out I'm out I literally was at my desk and I was like I took my headphones off like I was I'm out I'm out I'm not oh, I'm not it, doing this here I'm not is, doing it this is intense. Dude, look at those dice like it, as as soon as she answered the door in that trailer I was like nah like yeah, nah <laughs> nah fam oh that is really great looking we all float down here yeah so in the game Pat Pat's got it. Yeah, so th this is a cooperative game. So um, you can play up to seven players taking on the roles of the various kids who each have their own sort of abilities um, that they bring to the table. And what you're trying to do is um, sort of protect um, Derry from Pennywise and, and overcome him. And, of course, uh, you know, he's going to pop up unexpectedly. Uh, there's a lot of, like, tense moments where you're flipping cards from a deck to try to fight back against Pennywise, but he has cards in there too. Um, and so you're trying to collect sets as you flip over those cards of like, you might need three orange cards and you're trying to get them, but you know, somewhere in that deck, he's got his, his counter attacks, which could sort of throw your plans to ruin. Oh, and it's the likeness with the kids from the movie. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. So it's, it's all threat management. Uh, this, this game has some big swings in it. Where's Mike from Stranger Things? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a Hasbro game property, sir. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm making fun because I did find his character. What is yeah, his character in It? Oh, now I'm going to forget his name. He's got a, a character board in there. Um, He's the one that curses all the time, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we've got, uh, it's not uh, Ben, like. There he no. is. Stan? Stan. Stan. There Stan. we go. It's Stan, not Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, uh, that's a Mike. We're on episode no, it's, it's four Richie. of season Richie. three. Richie. <laughs> oh, okay. Richie. Oh, he's Richie. Okay. Richie, yeah, there you go. There's. That's his playing card. He's a loser. If you guys know that. Oh, Loser's Club. Loser's, Loser's Club. Club. Yep. Okay. Um, so, so, so this, yeah, I missed that earlier. Is this based on just the It series? Uh, first film. First film. Okay. Yep. So, so then follow up, would you guys be working on something for the sequel as well? Or is that, is development a little too long for something like that? So it's one of those that. things where, uh, yeah. right, right now we could be, but also essentially like we'll, if a game does well, we really enjoy it. The license is great to work with and all these things. Then we look at, Hey, I, we, we, we want to continue the series and do all these things. All the time we do, we just got to figure out what's right for us. Right, and so sometimes we will have a game, and we're like, "This is gonna be awesome. Let's keep it going." Or otherwise, it's not because like, the, the second movie is coming out, but the game's based on the first one. Yeah, right? I, I I sort of equate that to um, video game designers. I hear this a lot, or musicians. You know, like they put out an album that's got a theme to it, and everybody loves it, and they're like, "Yeah, that was great," but we don't want to do honky tonk anymore. We want to go back to doing pop, and they lose that audience that loved that one thing. And like, do you guys run into that as well? Where 
uh, you, you're game designers and you like making games and marketing them, and you're like, hey, we did it. Great. Like, we want to do something. We want to go. We want to go work on unicorns right now because that's where we're creatively we want to go. Do you run into that a lot? Fatigue or uh, we we get both sides of it, right? Yeah. So like sometimes it's it, like uh, a game is very specific to the license, very specific to the story, and we feel like that was a great experience. But now let's move a new direction. Um, sometimes we feel like that license is served. Uh, the the audience is really happy, but there's not necessarily demand for more. Other times, like as Russ was saying with Hogwarts Battle. Harry was, Potter, they just eat it up. Yeah, and, yeah. and so there's a new opportunity there. But then we also start to look at, like, are there other games we could do for that IP that are new mechanics, new ways of playing? Um, and then sometimes we have a mechanic that people love, like the Hogwarts Battle Engine, but that isn't necessarily reaching non-Harry Potter fans. And we look for ways to take that gameplay and turn it on its ear a little bit and make something new, like the Toy Story deck building game that we so have we coming. Just, yeah, so we just what? announced, Hello? So we just announced uh, Toy Story Obstacles and Adventures. Yay! And that's going to be, a, 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 as Pat was saying, to kind of turn it on its, on its foot a little bit. So there's no attacking in the game, but it's all about solving obstacles and all the different... It, solving puzzles. Like, things you've got to do right there. And it's, but because we really enjoyed our fifth player expansion we had for Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, the Toy Story game has five players already in it. We're already good to go there. It's made for an audience to, hey... If you love Toy Story, you know, it's got all four animated films in it and then the two animated shorts. Oh, that's fantastic. So you play through that, but it's also made for, hey, you can play with your kids and now teach them how to play a deck building game. But at the same time, each game, you as you add to it and beat it, it gets a little harder, gets a little harder, gets a little harder. Walt is too young. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're thinking. Walt is too young. I know, I know. All right, so wrapping it up, um, let's, let's, let's bring it back home for you guys. Uh, uh, the op, you guys are up in Carlsbad. Mm -hmm. If if somebody would like to, you know, have a chance to uh, game test some games for you, get a sneak peek of some things, how can they sign up again? So if they, so we are up in Carlsbad. We're a standard based company. It's super fun. We love having people come up and put this game to us. They go to our website at theop.games. Uh, they can find us there. We do focus testing based stuff too. We have lots of cool products. Uh, we're on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we have a, a, a Twitch channel where we're doing twice a month for playing games called the Op Live. Uh, we'll be doing a big thing for Comic Con literally later this week. We'd love to join you guys for the. We Op would Live. love to have you. And up we for definitely that. want to do a tour. We we talk about that yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. So we'll give you guys some access. We'll show that stuff. Oh, off totally. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get once everything is up and running. We're right in the middle of the building it for con season and everything like that. But having you guys up would be super fun. Um, yeah, so Maybe in the fall sometime. That'd, yeah. be, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. And uh, so we can find us on there. We're going to be at Comic-Con. Uh, we're going to be at Gen Con if you're going to be there too. But obviously for Comic-Con, we're going to be running around doing some stuff like that. Uh, if, you have, if you have a ticket, come to the booth. We're going to be doing some really cool stuff for it. There's going to be a whole photo area. You can get some cool giveaways. It's the first time we're going to have um, it's going to be there. Batman Talisman uh, with the Talisman uh, Superhero Villains Edition. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun stuff available. Um, we've got a lot of cool games coming out, too. We didn't even get, didn't even get the Astro Trash, which is one of our new other party <laughs> games. And then I, I love bringing illustrations around, too. We're going to actually give these games away. Uh, you can enter online, alt949radio.com. Uh, uh, Jeremy and I host the Casual Gamers podcast. I'm going to be covering games down at Comic-Con for the podcast. And then, of course, uh, myself and Bryce, who isn't here, uh, we co-host the Capes on Caves podcast, which is just geeky superhero culture so of course I think you like nerd stuff nerd stuff yeah, yeah. so uh, nerd, we'll, have all your, we'll have you totally covered on your uh, your podcast uh, throughout Comic Con and Ross has joined us before we have great videos we've played uh, Avengers uh, Thanos Rising With Captain Marvel Captain Marvel uh, we played uh, Samurai Superman Jack Scrolls, Samurai Jack and we've got more to come because Nightmare they... Before Christmas, Monopoly. Oh yeah, that was fun too. Uh, yeah, so all those videos are on our <laughs> website. Please check those out. And of course, we're going to be giving these games away. Uh, there will be an intro to win down below. If you're watching this on Facebook uh, and you're watching live, thank you for watching live. Yes. If you're watching the week of Comic Con, all this stuff is happening here in Comic Con. Go be out and be a part of it. Uh, Alt 94.9 will be on the streets. Uh, free tickets, summer. You can win your tickets as well. Anything else, Jeremy? I think we nailed it, my friend. We nailed it. That's it. Say say goodbye. Thanks cool. for watching. Later. Thanks. Bye, guys.